Hi there, my name is Darren Sutton and welcome back to The Ballpark. I think we all truly understand the foundation of Perfect Game and this network. It's scouting. It's the athletes, their metrics, the showcases, and the goals that they reach. Whatever those goals may be at the very highest level that suits them. But this show, we plan on being very different. Welcome to Perfect Game Stories. The stories behind the athletes, their journeys, the humanity of it all, and the coaches and families that help them along the way. Let's start in Bradenton, Florida at IMG Academy with a roster loaded with Perfect Game All-Americans and so many talented players. Names like Tommy White and Mason Albright and James Wood all played in the 2020 PG All-American Classic. And a man who may be the number one pick overall in the 2022 draft, Elijah Green. Recently, at PG's High School Showdown, we went down into the dugout, learned the secrets to success of IMG, and we had a little fun, too. You wake up in the morning excited for games like this. If you're not, you probably shouldn't play. Meaning, when you play a team like IMG, this is why you play, to play the best. Good, yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> the speed for Granado is turned loose. It's a stolen base. Pretty good throw. Hot shot, line drive, base hit, left field. Runners on first and third. Boy, did he hit it hard. Sweeping breaking ball, runner on the move, skips on by, that'll play to run. Thank you. Hey, hey Davion, size 11. <laughs> I said size 11. There's a nine, probably moving faster. I just had a bag, so. 22, his name is Elijah Green. He's a number one player in the country. <laughs> Can't wait for the PG scout video later. <laughs> Elijah Green, 1-1. One, one. <laughs> hey, let's go, Tommy, good. I want a Tommy bomb right here. Hey, let's go, Tommy. Right here, 3-4, let's go. Let's go Tommy. <laughs> that was the pitch. Wait, just wait till he throws the hanging curveball. It might go over the green. Oh! No! Out of boy, Tommy! Barrel sees a bit. Let's go, one seven, babe. Let's go. Ooh! Hey, great hack, babe. That stare him down. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Oh. This is going to be a rough one. Hey, tell me you're getting a home run so I can get a hit. All right, appreciate it. The guy's kind of tipping the pitches, and uh, he didn't really move his glove much, so I knew it was a fastball. And I was kind of up, so had to go in the bullpen. So yeah, that's about it. Alabama playing Mont 
Tom Hurd to the bottom of the second, already up in zero. Playing on a nice stadium. SEC championships play right here. Valid. There you go, Stone. SFR Russ. Still never added me back on Snap. Did he ever add you back? Let's go, Marshall. My boy Marshall comfy on the mound, though. Wow, wow. Two days in a row. We did win when I was tapping the seeds. Hey, I should have brought the Skittles. We would have been lit. Let's go, Drake. Yeah, that's a size nine shoe walk right there, dude. He's gonna tell you where it's a size 11, but it's a size nine. Oh. Go, Woody. We're gonna have like a line drive. Line drive to center. Base hit. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> he did the he did the core core velocity though, bro. James Wood just hit a bomb. Now we're up 2-0. And James Wood is great. So we win tomorrow. We're gonna hit a little dog pile action. Elijah Green at the plate. The bat speed, the power. Off oh. the top of the wall. This guy is just absolutely ridiculous. That ball is high in the air to right field, and it's gone. James Wood goes yard for IMG. Now we get to see Tommy White. His swing is ferocious as he rips that ball down the left field line, right on cue. Let's see if he White. goes to for second base. He is. Yes, sir, that boy. That'll do it. The IMG Ascenders win the Red Pool Championship today on Championship Saturday here on Perfect Game TV. And by the way, a special word of thanks to Davion Hickson, Florida State commit, talented right-handed pitcher. He's the young man who wore the microphone a bunch at the end and helped us see that feature all the way through. This is a very talented pitcher, up to 93 miles an hour recently, pitching for FTB San Francisco Giants scout team. And he and his mates, they were again with IMG victorious at the perfect game high school showdown. And of course, the showdown in Hoover, Alabama at the Hoover Met, which is about 50 miles away from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The Alabama Crimson Tide, where Dylan Smith, a junior in this, the 21 season, is making a major impact. But on this show, let's go back in time. Smith was much younger, much leaner, and very, very open, talking about his mom, a single mom, and the impact she had on his life before, way before, his journey to Alabama. Let's go back to the 2018 World Showcase. He's an old soul with a young and lively arm. Alabama commit Dylan Smith challenged himself at Perfect Games 2018 World Showcase and continued an ascension that has been ongoing for more than a year. And he's taking all of those that he loves along for the ride. You challenge yourself in these experiences, obviously. You've committed to Alabama. Yes, sir. And so to come and take something on like this, the first question is, why? Why come take something on like this? I want to compare my talents to others, great ones in the nation, in the US, and um, in the world, actually. I want to see how would I stand out against these people that I'm playing against. And I felt like I did a great job today, you know, pitching on the mound going against some of the best in the world. Let's go back to Alabama. Yes, sir. Because that's where you always wanted to go. Yes, sir. That's my dream school. Grandma lives in Birmingham, right? Yes, sir. So introduce us to your relationship with the grandmother and your relationship with the state of Alabama. 
my grandma is a big, <laughs> big factor in my life, you know. Uh, What's your name? Wilhelmina Evans. Okay. Wilhelmina, that's a classic, that's a beautiful name. <laughs> yes, sir. Is Wilhelmina proud of you and everyone else proud of you that you're going to study mechanical engineering? Yes, sir. Why mechanical engineering? Uh, I like to do math and science. I like to think, problem solve. I like to, you know, I want to think harder than other careers that I focused on. But a lot of baseball coaches didn't like that because they said that the classes would be, you know, making baseball baseball schedule hard to compete with my mechanical engineering. So basically, I chose mechanical engineering just so I could prove people wrong. I know one person that completely you don't have to prove wrong, and it's Felicia, your mom. She seems to believe in you as much as you believe in yourself, and now I know where you get it from. So, single mom, she's been there since you were a very young man for you. Uh, I just told a small part of the story. Tell me the rest. Basically, my mom was a, a single mother, you know. She's been single, you know, since I was five years old. She was divorced my dad. But basically just being me and her and my, like my other family on her side, basically struggling, you know, through some ups and downs, but she always had a better plan. Like she always knew how to get things, you know, when it, money was tight. But she's been there every, ever since, you know, I was playing T-ball <laughs> since I was three. So she's been at every game. The only time she misses is if her job makes her. <laughs> but she somehow finds a way to get back on time. <laughs> You know what she says about you, that you find a way to get things done too, that you understand the value of a dollar, that you don't take anything for granted, that at times you will make the phone calls on behalf of yourself to an event where maybe dollars are tough and hoping there are scholarships available. She's proud that you will do that work. That's pretty cool. Yes, sir. Where'd that come from? I don't know. I just had that mentality. Well, if she can't do it all the time, I guess I need to step in and try to make things easier. Now, I read her the following, and uh, we shared that, obviously. You, you, you sent in some great notes about your mom. I read it to her, and it's a lot of what you said. But you said, it's because of her that I can showcase my talents, and I don't take any of that for granted. And if I told you that I showed it to her, and she cried, what would that mean to you? I mean, she was happy, and she knows that, you know, I really care about her. Gosh, it's hard not to be incredibly proud of Dylan, and you can bet that his mom is too. He has blossomed into one of the biggest arm on the Alabama Crimson Tide. That's Brad Bohannon, the head coach, and his staff. Congratulations and the very best to the brightest of futures to Dylan Smith. And now let's go just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, to Perfect Games East Cobb Complex, where recently the PG Cares Foundation gave back, and we were able to be there and blessed to experience all the smiles and joy with the young athletes from Slater Elementary, who many, for the first time ever, were grabbing a baseball and a bat and a brand new glove. Here's their evening, and oh my goodness, was it fun. We're excited about this day, and I hope that you all are. When you guys get to this opportunity to work out and have some fun, kick some balls around, catch some balls, throw, just be kids. Have fun today. Enjoy every single moment of it. Today also, we have Dick Sporting Goods and Rawlings. They will be giving you all free gloves. There we go. We just got it, buddy. We got that. We won that battle. You know, for me, uh, I always say, regardless of you know, what you think, you're a role model to kids. You had the opportunity to play at that ultimate level and kids got to watch you, you know, not the kids today, but, you know, for me, giving back to them, it makes them better and it gives them a hope and an opportunity that they can make it and they can dream big. And that's my mission. Just keep it in front of you. You may even have to make a throw. Just keep your body squared up and under control, all right? Good job. I want to stay here and use my hips, come on. 
to take you know what they've been able to create on the field with baseball and uh, getting kids exposure and trickle it down to the, the communities that need it the most. I hate to use the word culmination because I mean we're just getting started. There's a certain sense of accomplishment that uh, is very rewarding. The trip to the school today was phenomenal. Saw a lot of great kids and uh, actually saw a, 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 a great educational system for those kids. If anything, that probably means more to me than uh, all this baseball stuff. Going out there and giving kids the opportunity to participate and and open their eyes up to something new that they don't get a chance to do? Well, I'm, for us, it was exciting because a lot of these kids haven't been outdoors to play and be amongst each other in over a year. Uh, and for them to get an opportunity, we brought wiffle ball bats and baseballs out there and we were out on a field uh, playing and having fun and you could just see the excitement in these kids' faces. My responsibility is just really inspiring the kids, inspiring the youth, inspiring the kids that are in the community especially when you come from the, the same community that I come from. And it's important to, to share that with the kids so they can have something to lean on and know that, uh, you know, they're not by themselves. Great things can happen if you keep working and you have people that believe in you. Good job. What's happening? Uh, give me some. Truly, so you would throw like this. Our students are talented. They uh, come with a lot of abilities, they come with a lot of talents, they come with a lot, of, and they come with some challenges. Um, and the challenges oftentimes are more highlighted than their talents and abilities. So for them to get the opportunity to come and play with Perfect Game and get the opportunity to meet players who have played for the Braves and, and other major league teams, it's really an amazing opportunity. Today was fun that I learned how to throw the ball, learn how to catch. We paid attention to what our coach says. We had a little break, and uh, that's all we did. Over there, we, we hit off the tee. Um, we did soft toss over there. Then over here, we just threw and threw little soft tosses um, to each other. And then over here, we just did fielding and stuff and catching the ball. Learn how you can throw, catch, and run around, play like kids. It was fun, and now I start to like baseball more. And I got a whole bunch of home runs. Come on. <laughs> that is awesome. All of the MLB players were out here, which made it more interesting to see what they would teach us, because whatever they did was really cool. And maybe one day we'll be able to have the opportunity to do it, too. But when I see you in 10 years, what will you be doing? Um, playing baseball still, so hopefully. Why not cry and try to get to the MLB? We were those kids at one time, and I think for us it's important uh, to show these kids that uh, we didn't grow up with a lot of money, a lot of us. We worked hard and we were dedicated and you could be that same person if you do the same thing. And at the same time, we're teaching them about uh, giving back, being part of the community. In the end, it's really boils down to, you know, how, mu how much did you really help? To me, that's probably the single most important thing that we're presently doing. At the end of the day, I mean, I've told people before that I, I actually believe that as far as a, from a personal standpoint, uh, PG Cares would be possibly my greatest accomplishment. And by the way, thanks to Rawlings and Dick's Sporting Goods, everyone went home with brand new equipment, including a sparkling new glove. And Marquise Grissom? Junior Spivey, Luis Gonzalez, Brian Jordan, amongst many other former major leaguers were all there and they were all better for it. Now finally, let's go back a couple of years. It was a day we had a unique experience with an athlete not too far ahead of his draft day in 2018. You see, we met up just outside of Phoenix with Matthew Liberator. We had lunch with him. We went home with him. He took his afternoon nap. We rode the bus to the game with him and then pitching across town in front of dozens and dozens of scouts, we got to see the true pressure through his eyes. Let's go back with Matt. I 
And sometimes I'll turn on some music or put some headphones on, um, but I'll just close my eyes and I pretty much picture the last 10 feet of flight on the ball. Um, if I know where I'm pitching, I'll see myself in like a bird's eye view um, in that setting. If I know who I'm facing, or at least some of the kids on the team, which I do today, I'll picture myself facing them, um, striking them out, um, you know, busting them inside with a fastball or painting a fastball on the outside corner. Um, picture myself dropping in curveballs for strikes, uh, burying a curveball on the back foot for a swing and miss, um, picturing my changeup fading away and you know out of the way of the bat um, and it's just like really fast like I see 10 pitches like that like I just picture that last 10 feet of flight and it's just like boom 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 and then I just move it around wherever I want to see it. of a life lived as a teenager and an elite athlete. It's an incredibly unique challenge to say the least. Your family, your goals, your friends, your choices, your training, your academics, all are elements of utmost importance. Left-handed pitcher Matthew Liberator has walked that fine line and managed to keep everything in its proper place and perspective while doing so under pressure and scrutiny that would shrink so many. In the process, he has become one of the most sought after arms in the 18 draft. I have a picture on my phone of me throwing at Chase Field when they used to have the like, radar gun up by where the little playground is now. Yeah. And I was like, what, five? Yep, that was, this was a moment of discovery. I think a lot of it comes from my dad and also my pitching coach, John, um, just being super competitive my whole life, um, being able to really focus in on one thing at a time. Um, I feel like I've been able to do it since I was probably seven or eight years old. That one in the bucket is you too. That's, oh that's in the bucket, very nice. <laughs> In the first round, the Reds select this kid in the bucket. <laughs> we just hung those up like a month ago. Thought it was pretty cool. Chase Field opening day, I want to say 2008. Dan Heron's on the mound. Ah. Uh, at I throw 88 <laughs> on Twitter. Well, I would have been about right there during yeah. that game, calling that game. Mm -hmm. I was there too. And then I got. PG ball with all the guys' names on it. Trevor Hoffman's autograph. May I? Of course. That's really cool. So these are all your teammates from the... Yeah. You won one of these bad boys, huh? I did. That's cool. Yeah, that was awesome. You, you, you value your experiences. Definitely. This is really neat. In the fall, did you, did you play much baseball? I didn't play at all since you my last... You didn't pick one of those up at all in the fall? No. no. I, they were yelling at me too, but... Who's they? The balls. <laughs> <laughs> no, but after the championship game in Canada... September-ish, right? Yeah, I think it was like September 10th, I want to say. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't touch a ball and I just worked out, focused on nutrition and putting on a little bit of muscle mass. And then I threw in our season opener at home against Boulder Creek. stuff that I can still go out there and compete and work with what I have and give my team the best opportunity to win despite not maybe feeling my best. He probably tells you guys about it. How many of these in-home visits have you had to have? Uh, I did 28. Oh my I didn't gosh. do one with the Cubs and my one with the Pirates was at area codes. So technically I had 29 meetings, but only 28 teams came to my house, and a couple teams came multiple times. That's crazy. It was a lot. I had one week where I did seven in one week. 
And then that was also the week that Jay Johnson came down to visit okay. uh, because he was allowed to. And so I had seven in-home meetings with teams and him coming to visit in, right. on five days. <laughs> what did they ask you about? Everything? It, honest, it honestly is everything, but they ask a lot about the mental side of the game, how I approach hitters, what I see in hitters. Um, they ask a lot about the summer, um, guys that I faced, guys that I played with, who I liked, who I didn't like, who I thought was really good. Um, they had you do the scouting for them. Yeah, honestly, That's a little exactly bit. What they it's did. smart by them. <laughs> Give us a visual on what it's like in that tiny little tunnel-like bullpen to have all kinds of men standing around you to warm up and to get ready to wind your way through them and then to look up and see about a hundred of them up there. What's that like? Give us a visual. Um, honestly, I don't really see it. I noticed it before the game and I'm kind of like, cool, whatever. Um, but when I go out there, I kind of have that tunnel vision, I guess you could describe it as. Um, I don't see anything but the catcher's glove and the hitter and you know what's right in front of me and outside of that I just kind of zone it all out. I think we got a really good team this year. Um, the one thing I think that's different about this year versus previous years um, is that our team isn't segregated. So like in previous years um, we'd have like the upperclassmen were all friends and they always went and hung out together and the under underclassmen, if there are any on the team, were just kind of left to be. Yeah. And they ended up being friends and hanging out because they were forced to. But I remember feeling like I couldn't go and talk to the seniors and that they didn't want to talk to me or the upperclassmen in general. And I hated that feeling because of it. I didn't want to be a part of the team because of that. And so as soon as I got the opportunity to be in the position of like a leadership role, I made sure that if we had any underclassmen on the team or any kids who maybe didn't feel comfortable, that they felt included and that they felt like they could talk to me or any of the other upperclassmen. And I think all our seniors this year feel that same way because they're all really good kids. They've all hung out with me for a long time and so I know them. And so I talk to them about that and make sure that you know everybody feels like a one team. It's not, oh, we're seniors and you're freshmen, so you're going to go do all the mound work or you're going to do this or that. Like, we all contribute equally. And I think if um, everybody feels comfortable off the field, it's going to make it that much easier to go on the field and compete. As everything's sort of built up, I've found how important it is to be able to have friends that I can go to and hang out with and things that I can do to take my mind away from that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's been super useful to have, you know, especially these two people in my life. And since we spent time with Matthew, things are going quite well as a pro. 111 innings, 113 strikeouts, a trade to the Cardinals where he is expected to be a huge part of the foundation and the future in St. Louis. Thanks for spending time with us on PG Stories. And by the way, before we wrap, here's a look ahead, a sneak peek at what's next. I went to a lot of third world countries and I saw that they didn't really have that access to a lot of the resources that we do in the States. So I would love to change the world. At that time, like, I knew I was good for playing in Georgia, but not the whole country. And then being selected as one of the top players in the country to play in that, I think it really made me realize that, like, I'm one of the best and I could really do this. On behalf of everyone at Perfect Game TV, my name is Darren Sutton. We'll see you again very soon at the ballpark. <laughs>